I will speak about, again, the process of nihilization um, uh, and the com uh, a comparative approach between the Balkans. What I'll look at is, um, I'll have an emphasis on ceramics as the material remains of social interactions during the dispersal of a farming way of life into the Balkans. So uh, I'll, I'll present the results of a systematic analysis of ceramic assemblage similarity and the analysis of the transmission of technological knowledge through uh, thin section petrography. So how will I do that quick, for a quick theoretical framework into the sociological background of ceramic production? These can be viewed uh, in the context of a theory of practice as embedded in the habitus or social background of their producers. And therefore, cross-cultural similarities can inform us about the processes of transmission between a cultural tradition and social interaction. Um, so firstly, I will focus on patterns of similarity um, that relate to sort of stylistic uh, aspects of ceramic assemblages, and secondly, to focus on a more the, the tradition in, in the sense of this sociological background. I'll focus on um, uh, on uh, petrographic results from the earliest uh, phases of the Neolithic in these three sites. So, in my aim to systematically delineate. Uh, patterns of similarity, um, of ceramic change, similarity, continuity. Uh, I will compare these sites in their temporal framework. And what I did was I did an attribute analysis. Basically, uh, what I did, I recorded per, this, per site, um, per site phase in the ground, I recorded um, the presences of certain attributes relating to ceramic production. So, for example, shapes, uh, morphological features, uh, uh, stuff like uh, surface treatments, decorations. And well, th this resulted in a pairwise matrix of presences, which you can compare statistically. So the result of this is that you can show the relative cultural distance between each of these site phases. And this gives you information about how similar certain sites are to each other. What you, so this is, this is a multi-dimensional scaling plot of this, which I will not go into this too deep. You can also make a phylogenetic approach and see how related certain or the hierarchical clustering of certain uh, sites to each other. And so the next step was to test whether there's certain cultural regions in this area. So these are regions that are mainly geographical and all, we, we know that may, uh, maybe there's different patterns emerging that maybe these sites, uh, these regions are um, more geographical than actually regions in the Neolithic. So what I did was a network analysis, which I will quickly flick through, unfortunately, because we don't really have a lot of time to discuss it. But um, I will show you through time how uh, patterns of similarity change. So in the earliest phase, we see, for example, in this Marmara region already that there's not really a big connection between um, the two sites I will go into later. And this actually sort of through time, you see the changing um, relationships between certain sites and there's a big connection uh, so the thicker lines is more similar uh, you see a big connection between two sites on the Aegean coast um, so this carries on into uh, later in the Neolithic you see the Balkans becoming involved and overall the pattern gets more uh, more and more uh, connected so you see higher similarity scores <coughs> through time um, uh, for example, in this phase we see uh, this area, Macedonia, Veluska, Tumba, uh, and, uh, and Anza Begovo, not very connected, but rather have their connection somewhere else. Um, yeah, and carrying on, you see more dispersed uh, pattern emerging of different regions being more connected to each other and not this overall uh, massive Aegean connection that we had before. Whereas it comes back later, here we see more sites in the Aegean that, that seem to have a very uh, focus over sea. Um, yeah, and that's basically the end of my network analysis. So now on to tying this into the petrographic results. Um, I looked at the Marmara region in the first place. So very earliest, uh, the very earliest ceramic assemblage from Bartinuyuk uh, I will discuss. So this site is the very earliest in the Marmara region. Um, ceramics date back to 6,500 BC. And um, uh, it's really interesting because it's part of this Vikirtepe area 
that we've already heard last speaker about. Um, yes, it's uh, it's basically what the idea was was to define whether technologically there's an, um, there's any similarity between Barjanuyuk and Octopaklik, which are quite close by, but very uh, different sites, obviously. So this is the earliest site, and in the very earliest phase, we see a lot of metamorphic uh, rocks appearing in the in the assemblage and a very very singular uh, focused ceramic tradition with with only one type of tempering material sourced around the site in this sort of purplish area with the black sort of uh, waves in it uh, a schist uh, phyllite base and then in the second phase what we see is a complete shift to calcite temper completely uh, uh, unrelated to the source area of the previous phase. So we see something very interesting going on here. And, and this second phase compares to the earliest phase of Octopraklik, which I'll speak about now. Octopraklik excavated by Nechmi Karol, indeed. Um, very interesting site. Um, in terms of ceramic petrography, it's very heterogeneous. We find different types of temper at this site. We find volcanic rocks, metamorphic rocks, sedimentary rocks and organic material, um, all available around the site, but it already appears that there's, there's four different fabrics going on, uh, that none of them use calcite, which is available in the area. Um, so this, it looks like that this is definitely a very different technological tradition. People had a very different approach to ceramic production, and also, stylistically, they're unrelated. So. In terms of earliest ceramic assemblages in Turkey, this is a very interesting uh, find. So going on to the Balkans, so the earliest site here that I have material from is uh, Juliunica and Tanya de Vansova has a poster about this later, it goes into way more detail. But what I could find is that from these ceramics, uh, we have a very clear Starchevo signature with a lot of organic temper, only three of my samples had no organic temper and the rest had, so the remaining uh, 33 had organic temper. So what, what we can see here is that there's a different tradition than in the Marmara region. Obviously the site is later, but if you compare it to the previous slide, um, we can see that there's, in terms of this cultural or uh, stylistic region in the second phase of Juliuni, so there's some kind of connection going on with uh, Ulujak, um, which is noted in the literature. Well, looking at the technological background of Ulujak, we see that also in this site they started using organic material. Is this a connection? To be honest, I don't think so, because Ulujak, um, Juliunica starts with an earlier phase in which Ulujak doesn't have so much organic material yet. I think, I think it's very... Um, well, I think we cannot really we can really place this site into a Starchevo tradition, um, yeah, in a star, Starchevo ceramic tradition instead of into a Balkan tradition. Uh, but further analysis will go into this a bit deeper. So, just to sum up, we find heterogeneity in ceramic production among the sites in Neolithic Anatolia in the earliest phase. Then we have a connected Aegean, in which uh, stylistic uh, trade spread through, throughout, throughout the area, but we have no clear cultural regions in the beginning. We have more something like a targeted social interaction, which uh, uh, certain sites have some kind of connection, whereas others don't, and they don't really respond very well to their very immediate surroundings. So that's about it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>